All right, welcome to Cooking Time with Derek. Um, my neighbor's a little bit loud right now, uh, a lot of walking around, so it'll be a little bit noisy. But uh, I am making a dish that is inspired by one of D and D's very own uh, Kai. So I'm going to make basically a baked mac and cheese with some meat. So basically, a hamburger helper, but not really. So I'm gonna give some cooking tips in general, and uh, maybe, maybe maybe just do some talking. So um, anyway, so to get started, uh, this pot bowl pot thing right here already has water um fun fact you don't necessarily have to salt your water to make it cook faster you add salt for flavor but i put so much flavor in everything else i don't usually do it so we're just gonna put that water on high and then work and get into a boil now over here we have our pan with the pan we're going to cook our meat separately we're gonna cook the pasta first meat separately, put cheese, combine it all, put it in a pan. So, the first thing you do when you're cooking with meat and you want to put some actual flavor to it, you gotta, you know, season your meat. There's a pun in there somewhere. So, grab yourself a bowl that's big enough to hold all the meat. I need to stop saying meat, it's getting kind of weird now. So, Take all your meat, put it into the bowl. So usually I go for spicy as hell, but for today I'm going to do a little bit more lenient with the spice. So we are going to use we're gonna use a little bit of Tony's because everything is better with Tony's. It's a Cajun seasoning that has a bunch of different seasonings within it, so it kind of works on its own or just like as an extra to other things. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of garlic powder. Cause usually when you make like a pasta, you usually wanna go for more of an Italian flavor. I find uh, doing things like onion and garlic kinda helps it a bit. So onion and garlic powder onto the meat. Got a little bit of plastic on my thumb. Get off. And actually, we'll add one more. I also have garlic salt. Slightly different. I just like to use it because it gives a little bit more of a pinch. All right. So, if you're gonna cook something like a spaghetti or Alfredo, usually you would also add your seasonings once you uh, Put your whatever sauce, your alfredo or tomato sauce, whatever. You add some more seasons at that point. But for this, since we're baking this, I'm just gonna do the meat, season that, and we'll add a little bit of Tony's towards the end, but we're not gonna do any more beyond that. So once you got your seasoning on your meat, you're gonna get your hands in there. You're basically just gonna mix it all up as you can. And I should've got the pan going, but it's fine, it's fine. So mix up the meat a little bit more. All right, remember when you mess with meat, you gotta wash your hands. So usually whenever I cook my meats, whenever I have the pan going, I like to put on a kind of a lower setting, maybe like a three to a four. And add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Insert virgin joke here. So we're gonna put a little bit in there. And usually you wanna use the olive oil, I know the pan is more or less ready whenever it's able to kind of be more liquidy, kind of like water rather than like the more thick viscous kind of thing. All right, so the water for the pasta is boiling. We'll get in there. That's warming up. Meat's prepped to go. So I thought I would go with a few different cheeses. Um, in the actual mac and cheese, I got some uh, pepper jack. And I got a sharp cheddar. 
But once it's in the pan, I'm going to make a top layer of mozzarella, which is my favorite cheese. Pepper Jack is a close second because I like spice, but mozzarella is the goat. It's the goat of cheeses. I wonder if a goat can make mozzarella cheese. I don't know. But the pan shouldn't take too long. Um, it's still a little bit thick in there, so we need to make another couple minutes. That's going. Um, so I'm doing this without any sort of recipe or practice. So I can 100% fudge this up. But I'm pretty confident if I just take it slow, do it piece by piece, I'll be fine. Uh, so yeah. Um, so while well, we got a minute, um, how's everyone doing today? You doing good? You doing good? Staying healthy? Um, yeah, I'm terrible at talking. I, 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 I don't know what to talk about. Um, so, so yeah, I got a second book that can come out eventually. Um, just waiting for my friend to edit that. Um, it's really crazy when you like do something and it just kind of sits there forever. It's like a full finished product almost and it just sits there for ages. And you're just like, why are you not in the ether? Like, go out into the world. But my writing sucks. Not not like story-wise, but it, it it mostly sucks grammar-wise because I don't know how to write properly. I have a, I have an education, but English and writing I was just meh. It wasn't horrible, but because you know I've seen how some people write, and my God, people do not know how to use words. All right, so this is still going pretty good. Um, it is smoking a lot, but it's not quite at a boil. Uh, let's see, how is our olive oil looking? That probably just needs like another minute or two to warm up. And then we'll be cooking both these parts at the same time. And for the noodles, uh, I don't really work with egg noodles that often, so I thought I would go with egg noodles. So, egg noodles! Uh, but anyway, so... Yeah, it's fun. It's fun writing, though. It's fun. Just grammar sucks. Typos exist. It's, it's 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 annoying. But I do have a second book that's gonna be on the way eventually. So that's gonna be fun. I also have my flash fiction stories plus another one where like this AI is like an evil murderer thing. It's great. It's great. Uh, so let's see, what can I talk about? Um, oh, so Velma is a hot topic right now. Uh, I'm sure I'll watch this in like five years and be like, oh my god, I remember that. So yeah, Velma is uh, currently on episode 8 out of 10. It's releasing two episodes a week, which I found kind of weird, but... I guess they were kind of going to go for that once a week, but once they got like shit reviews, they were like, oh, let's release this a little bit faster. So they released two episodes a week. And it's just, after watching it, you do kind of get enthralled by the mystery of it. But the reveals suck, and it is just woke because it wants too hard to seem woke, if that makes sense. Like, it's okay to include diversity. You can have, like, people in the LGBT community, you can have black people, Indian people, whatever. But it's just, you can't take away the core of what makes the characters the characters. It kind of ruins the whole purpose, kind of ruins what's going on. So that's where they really screwed up. It's like, just, it seems like the kid who was bullied and is now just trying to bully back, but using an IP that is, what, I think Scooby-Doo's been around since, what, the late 60s, early 70s-ish? So they really are messing with fire by trying to mess with that kind of IP. The biggest thing is Velma being Indian, sure, whatever. Um, Daphne being uh, Asian, that was a bit of a stretch. Shaggy being black, when he is probably the biggest pothead of the group, what is that? That is messed up, that is horrible. Uh, I will continue this rant in a moment. Let me go ahead and get this uh, meat cooking. So right now it's currently in a big ball blob, but we're gonna. Back here, I'm faster than expected. 
That's what she said. Alright, so I'm going to break up the meats. It's going to be a little bit loud and sizzly, but we'll get there eventually. I don't know what is up with this pan, but it like likes to spin at me a lot. It's like there's bacon grease from like 20 years ago that just does not want to leave. And also I try to be a little bit on the healthier side, so I go for a 90% uh, lean versus a 10% fat. That's just my preference for ground meats. But if you keep it on a low heat, it won't cook too fast. Nothing's going to get burned. The whole point is just to kind of break it up as best you can as you stir it around, move it around. And it'll slowly turn to like a grayish brownish color. Which is what you want. I don't even know if you can hear me that well over the boiling and the sizzling, but I'm just going to keep talking anyway. But yeah, so back to Velma. So, you know, I, I've been keeping up with it. It's almost like I hate watch at this point, but I'm just kind of curious to where it all goes. But I was watching a lot of different videos on the topic, and obviously I can't really say anything that hasn't already been said before. But they really are just trying to be woke for the sake of being woke. And Mindy Colleen just seems like she wanted to make this as a way to just kind of put the middle finger up to literally everybody. Like, I get it. Like, you're a minority, so you're going to have a lot of struggles like throughout your, your whole life. But it doesn't mean you take it out on a poor IP like Scooby-Doo, which there's not even Scooby-Doo in it. Like, the main draw is there is a talking dog. He is the front man of the group. He is like... He's basically the Freddie Mercury of this group. Like, they're all superstars in their own right, but... Scooby-Doo is the front man. It's... Ugh. But, yeah. The show just... It's not even that good, to be honest. Like... As they reveal things from the mysteries, like as they reveal parents and stuff, it's just kind of like a, oh, here they are. It's like, wait, what? There, there's no proper build up, no like, nothing about it made sense. You know, they just kind of like did things for the sake of doing things. And also, can we talk about how it went for like being over meta? Prime example is the uh, first episode. Hang on, pause, pause. The water's coming to a boil. Alright, so as I was saying, so yeah, it tries too hard to be meta. Like it was talking about how, oh, they always start off with so much nudity in like these more adult shows, just to kind of like draw you in and yeah like shows like Game of Thrones definitely did that season one there was nudity all over the place there was dicks and boobs and everything but this is Scooby-Doo and they decide to go with high school age which means when they have that scene where all the girls are naked in the shower that's a bunch of 16 ish year old girls um, I don't know about you, but, um, that is considered underage, which is not okay. Like, I, I do understand that, like, yes, that is a very real situation, because girls will take showers at the gym of their school, but still, they didn't need to have the scene there. They just did it for the shock value, but it's inappropriate shock value when it's a cartoon which means they had to sexualize 15 16 year old girls that's a little weird I'm not gonna lie but it tried to be meta about it by like pointing it out before they did it. it's like oh there's always so much nudity and cut two girls all naked that was a bit much not gonna lie but the whole show is just a bunch of like 
oh, I hate it when shows and movies do this and that, and then proceed to do it. That is a cheap way of trying to come across as like, oh, we're making fun of this thing. We're not actually doing it when, you know, they're just doing it because they want to do it, but they don't want to seem like they're doing it just to do it. Excuse me. So, yeah, it just, it wasn't good. <laughs> And like I said, there's like reveals periodically, like every couple episodes of like different things. Like Daphne's parents and Velma's parents and stuff like that, but it just never really amounts to anything. And I know Fred has always been kind of a bit of a himbo, but they really, really made him a himbo in this. Like, it was very unnecessary and did not need to be a thing. Like, they made him more like a... If you've ever seen Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, uh, Kimmy for a while dates this guy who is super rich and like fancy pants, but he's also almost as dumb as Kimmy. So, yeah, so while he understands modern things, he doesn't understand things. And Fred definitely comes across as like this just rich, bold brat who basically grew up with silver spoon in his mouth and can't do anything for himself without his parents or a butler or someone doing it for him. Which, of course, he's the one character that kept white and of course they're doing him as the punchline of like, oh, all white men are just born rich but they're stupid as hell and blah blah blah. So it's all just, uh, it's just all stupid. Like, I don't know why they did that. Like, they could have done so much more with the show. If you want to go adult, that's fine, but you just, you need to be more original. Like, it's okay to be meta once in a while, but don't make it your whole shtick. And it just felt unnecessarily what it was. Like, it had no true identity. It was just trying to be shocking, meta, and everything that you think will sell, basically. But Scooby-Doo is not supposed to be that. It's supposed to be just like a bunch of 20-somethings going to solve mysteries, but it just didn't work out that way. All right, so it looks like the meat's just about done. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drain the water from the meat that's been accumulating. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off on the meat. Try to get as much of the meat juices as possible. Go ahead and put it back on here just to kind of keep it warm. Alright. Alright. Let me go ahead and rinse this out. Alright, doesn't really need a deep clean because the meat's about to be added to the noodles anyway. So we'll get the noodles cooking for another minute or two. They're already pretty close to done. Just give another minute to soak. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Velma. Uh, the show is definitely just not what it should have been. And it definitely 100% deserves the heat that it gets. Uh, so another side project I've been working on is going to the movies constantly. I've um, been going to movies about twice a week at this point. I'm trying to see one bigger movie and one smaller movie that I'm still interested in. And it's so interesting seeing all the different groups that go to these movies. Because depending on what the movie is, you're going to get a different clientele, obviously. Because going to see movies like uh, 80 for Brady and A Man Called Otto, that was a bunch of old people. But if you go see something like a horror movie, usually you get people in their 20s and 30s and maybe some teenagers. So it's just interesting to see the different age groups and type of people that go to different types of movies. Obviously I'm a fan of basically every kind of movie, so I'm willing to see anything no matter who it's meant for. But it's just, 
It's interesting, you know? All right, I'm gonna pause for a second so I can go drain the noodles. We'll go ahead and put the meat first. All right, let's go ahead and put on this one since it's a little bit cooler. So hopefully when you're stirring up the meat, you get it nice and small pieces so that way you can get throughout the whole meal. All right. All right, all nice and stirred. Put some meat in there. So like I said, mozzarella is gonna be our topping, so we're not gonna use that one quite yet. But we are going to go ahead and toss in both bags of cheese. This will probably get a little bit messy, but it's fine. I prefer using shredded cheese just because I like the stringness. But if you want to kind of cheat when you're making something like this, you can always use Velveeta. Uh, it melts a bit easier. It's closer to American cheese as far as consistency, so... Got some runaway noodles. You know, with these noodles, I would say these are bigger noodles than I was expecting. Usually I'm working with like spaghetti noodles or uh, like elbow macaronis. So using the egg noodles, it said one pound, which is about the amount that is in most boxes of noodles, but this seems a bit more. Not sure why, but. All right, so we got the pepper jack mixed in. We're gonna add some cheddar to it. And obviously you wanna mix the cheese in at this point now, because whenever you put it in the oven, you want it basically to just be to make it all cohesive, kind of bake it a bit, and then to melt the cheese that's going to be on top. But like I said, when you're using string cheese like, well not string cheese, but shredded cheese, when it starts to melt it gets very stringy and sticky, but I personally prefer the flavor and taste of it. Now at this point if you would like you can also add some milk to kind of give that extra creaminess. Um, I do not have any milk with me, so I will be foregoing that step. But usually when you make something like this, you can add cheap uh, milk to make the cheese more creamy rather than thick. But the main cheese is cheese, so it doesn't really matter. So the goal is to stir it into where the cheese is mostly fully melted already. So that way whenever it's cooking in the oven, which I need to go ahead and start getting prepped, I'm going to put the oven on 350, that's a good steady temperature to keep it at if you're not sure what to put it on. Uh, like I said, we're trying to do a slow bake, just so we don't burn anything, so we're going to just take our time with it. Have it set to 350, I'll bake it for maybe the first 10 minutes. Then we'll do it a couple minutes at a time from there, just until the nice there's a nice uh, caramelized layer of cheese on top. Alright. So, I would say this is melted enough. Go ahead and get some of this stuff out of the way. Alright, so obviously when you're working with pans, you have a non-stick pan, it's usually fine, but I like to still add a little bit of uh, oil, just kind of help make it cook a little better. and we work with things like cheese, it might help caramelize the edges a bit. All right, so, give this one last quick little stir. It's already getting kind of hard. All right. All right. So we're gonna put this into our pan. Obviously, you want to try and spread around best you can. Make sure it's nice and even in the pan. Like I said, with, string, with the stringy cheese, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to work with, but I do it for the flavors and you have more control over what the actual cheeses are. All right. 
Alright. So I'm going to do my best to spread this out as evenly as I can. Mm. Alright. Like I said, I was going to put a little bit more Tony's. Just put a nice layer there. It'll be covered up by all of the cheese, so hopefully when you take a bite, it doesn't automatically just get the Tony's. You kind of get a nice little spread. Alright, and obviously for this, since we're not going to be started in, you want to be more in control, so we're going to grab it by the handful. Like I said, I really love mozzarella, so that's what I'm choosing as the topping. And sometimes, for a nice little twist, sometimes when I need a top layer of cheese, I also like to use the uh, three cheese blend that you usually use when you make Mexican food. Because it has a nice variety of cheeses as well. Just if you want to have a little something special on top. Or maybe even mixed in. I don't know. You can do what you want with your cheeses. This is just how I prefer to do things. Alright. Alright. Nearly got everything spread out. possible. Alright, so I'm very impatient, so we're going to go ahead and pop this in the oven. Uh, it's not fully done preheating yet, but it should be kind of close. So we're going to go ahead and just pop it in there. The pan's already warm, so it shouldn't take too much time to cook. And always remember, when you cook in the oven, that the higher your rack is, the faster it's going to cook. So if you want things to get like super heated super quick, you put on a top layer, and then you put on a lower layer for it to still cook, but at a slightly slower pace. So yeah, now we're going to wait about 8 to 10 minutes, we'll check on it, but um, I don't know what else you want me to talk about. I, I, I could talk about different stuff all day, I don't know. Um... Uh, oh, I built a new computer recently. That was fun. Uh, so my computer has a, what was it, AMD 7700 for the CPU. Uh, got an AIO unit for the cooling. Um, the case itself is huge. Uh, it's really, really big, actually. Let me go ahead and grab you. I'm just going to grab you. We're going to take a look at this. Okay. Ha! Huh, now we're freeforming. Alright, so, the case for my computer is rather big. Um, yeah, so, this is my desk. I guess that's ready. Uh, so, this is the desk that I game and stream on sometimes. Uh, down here is the case, and it's a big honking thing. It's literally the height of the case, the desk. It barely fits under there. Um, eventually I'm going to upgrade it. Um, this is my ghetto second monitor. is basically just an old TV I used to have. Um, got my keyboard stuff. You know, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, it's a really cool computer. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Gonna have to edit this video in a little bit anyway. But like all cool computers, it has RGB and the butters. Yeah, look at it glow. It's doing things. And fun fact, see those little red dots? That means it's trying to post. Whenever you see little dots right there, it's trying to post. It's so going through all the things like your memory, your GPU, all those different things. Make sure they're running properly. If everything runs properly, it'll go through. And we have a cat reflection. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I have a butters in there. Got the 4080, which is really neat. I don't really need to struggle to play any games for a while, at least. Hello? He is terrified of this camera. I would be too. I would be too. 
But yeah, so this is my new computer. Like I said, it's got a 4080, so that's really cool. Um, it's no point in struggling with video games when you can, you know, just not. Uh, let's see, what else? So I've got the computer. Um, I don't know. Oh, I'm going to some concerts this year. Uh, let me let me just get some more head on while this is just casually cooking. Lord knows I'm probably gonna mess up the timer anyway, but it's whatever. We good now? Yes. So I'm going to see some uh, concerts this year. I'm going to see uh, Bowling for Soup on Cinco de Mayo. They'll be at a cantina a little north. I'm going to see Fall Boy. They're gonna be literally 10 miles away, so I was like, why not? Spent way too much money on those tickets, but it's fine. And also, I'm going to see Blink-182 in Austin. That's going to be a fun little weekend trip. So, you can see some bands. I've only been to one concert since COVID. Yeah, one concert since COVID. It was uh, The Killers, which was another fun little trip to Fort Worth. About an hour that way. It's fine. Is that even the correct... I think that's the correct direction. Uh, let's see, what else, what else is going on in my life, you know? Um, I don't know. Just doing stuff. I don't feel like, I don't, I don't want to keep talking, so we're, we're just going to cut to when this is done. Alright, so the, the food's almost done. I was going to give it like another minute or so. Uh, in the meantime, I just want to refresh some key cooking points. Uh, for pasta, the salt is for seasoning, not to make the water boil faster. Common misconception. Yeah. Common misconception. There we go. Uh, let's see. For the meat, make sure you season your yeah. Make sure you season your meat before you uh, cook with it. That way, you have the seasonings already kind of cooked into it. For cheese, Velveeta melts easier, but with shredded cheese, you have more choice of your cheeses. And also, so and steady wants to race, so don't cook anything too high and too long. Always check on your food periodically. Just like I should be checking it right now. It looked pretty close to completion when I checked about two minutes ago, so it should be good about now. Let that heat wave hit me. Yep, there we go. We'll give another minute or two. It's pretty close to done. I could even accept it as is, but it looks like it can go a little bit longer. Just want to give that uh, mozzarella cheese a little bit more of a golden brownish to it. Looks like it can melt just a tiny bit more. So when the clock up here says 4.15, which is in less than a minute, we're going to take it out, call it a day. So I hope you've been enjoying this cooking with Derek. Um, you know, this is a pretty simple meal. It's not the cheapest meal, I'm not going to lie. The cheese was about seven bucks. Meat was about seven. Noodles were about three. So you're looking about 15 to 17 bucks. However, this is a lot of food, so technically you should either feed a family, or if you're like me, live with yourself. It should hopefully last a good four to six meals. I don't know, I'm always a hungry boy, so I might eat a lot more than I should, but you know. But at least have some food. And honestly, this looks really good. It's really simple. Just, you know, noodles, cheese, meat. Just add my own Derek flavor to it. Alright, so clock has changed to 415. Turn the oven off. Don't forget to turn the oven off. So this is our final product. Let me go ahead and take you off the tripod. Give me a second. Alright, so get this yeah so this one looks like everything's nice and cooked so as you can hopefully see there's a little bit of browning to the cheese but not too much if you want you can add a little bit more salt pepper Tony's whatever seasoning you would like on top it's like a little extra flavor or if you wanted to, you could have put breadcrumbs on top, make it extra fancy, but this is what I did. This is what I came up with. This is the route I took, and I think it came up pretty darn good. 
So I will make myself a plate and I'm not gonna make y'all watch me eat it, but we're going to have a quick little review. All right, so I just finished eating. It was actually really good. It was super good actually. Um, probably should have kept it in the oven for maybe a few more minutes, gave it a little bit more of a crispiness to it. And some of the mozzarella and cheese on top was melted, but not quite 100% melted. So, you know, you learn, you learn from your cooking. Uh, so, note for myself, uh, what was it, like 11, 12 minutes? You may, may make 14, 15 at 350. But just to prove I ate it, I had a nice little chunk. Wanted to make sure that I had plenty of it. So it was actually super good. Um, so I enjoyed doing that. Making this video was fun. Um, don't know how much fun I'm gonna have editing this. Depends how much effort I put. But uh, let me know what I should make next time. Um, that's gonna be it. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.